At Computex 2024, AMD announced the new Strixpoint chipsets for laptops, and this is the new ASUS VivoBook S16 M5606W is equipped with that particular chip. For entrance, isn't it incredible? Now, I know that the ASUS VivoBook S's lineup is uh, rather confusing at this point. We have an Intel version, a Snapdragon version, and we actually have two AMD versions, one with the older generation 8000 series, and then there's this one with the Strix Point version. You have to pay attention to the code name at the end of the laptop's name to know which particular version that you are getting. For the specs of this particular version of the VivoBook S16 that we are testing here, we have this list of specs. AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX370, an AMD Radeon 890M integrated graphics, 32 gigs of RAM running at 7500 mega transfers per second, and also one terabyte of storage. I have also updated this BIOS version to 302, and the AMD GPU driver got two updates since I got this laptop. This GPU driver version is important because the second GPU driver update fixed some of the bugs and also improved the performance by quite a lot, actually. The laptop itself though is pretty standard in terms of the VivoBook S series of laptops. It's using the same chassis like any other VivoBook S16 laptops in the market and it also has the same magnificent OLED screen with a high resolution of 3200 by 2000 pixels that also goes up to 120Hz refresh rate. The color accuracy is as expected, it covers around 100% for both sRGB and DCI-P3 color gamuts and it can also go up to around 400 nits of brightness. And just like any other VivoBook S series of laptops, the RAM is soldered onto the motherboard and we can only swap out the M.2 2280 SSD if we want to. Even the Wi-Fi card is soldered onto the motherboard as well. But I'm not here to talk about the laptop since we've already done that, link at the top right corner there if you want to know more about the VivoBook S14, 15 and 16. What I'm here for is to test the performance of this AMD Strix Point chip, aka the AMD Ryzen AI chips, in varying types of workloads. So, going through AMD's website, we can see that the Ryzen AI 9HX370, a very long name for such a chip, this chip is the middle of the child in the family. It has four Zen 5 cores and eight Zen 5C cores, making it a 12 core CPU. The TDP ranges from 15 to 54 watts, and this laptop has the option to go to the highest fan speed possible to extract the most performance out of this chip. It does sound like a plane taking off, but that's not the point of today's video. The GPU has 16 cores and uh, I'm not going to talk much about the specs here because I'm just going to jump into the gaming test right now. So let's hop into the first game and I'm just going to use Genshin Impact first. I'm playing it at the lowest graphical settings at 1080p resolution and it can actually maintain 60fps and I'm very impressed by what this laptop can do. Then I tried it again at medium graphical preset and it once again managed to maintain 60 FPS. Seriously, this Ryzen AI 9 HX370 packs a strong punch. So then I changed the render resolution from 0.9 for the medium graphical preset to 1.0 and that is when the frame rate couldn't be maintained at 60 fps consistently and drops to around 50-ish fps. Still very good performance so far. Next up is Zenless Zone Zero. This game has the option to play it with unlocked frame rates and with the lowest graphical settings at 1080p. The frame rate does fluctuate to somewhere around like 60 to 80-ish FPS. So if we just kept the game to around 60 FPS, then it will be maintaining that frame rate throughout the entire gameplay. Scissors, 
Now let's try Woodering Waves. Since this game has FSR, I'm going to enable it and also change the graphical settings to the lowest preset and then change it to 60 FPS as well. The frame rate will hover around 40 FPS and there are no stutters, so that's actually fine. Of course, we have to test GTA 5 as well. At the lowest graphical settings, we can drive around and get around 100 FPS. Yes, 100 FPS. That is very impressive coming from an integrated GPU on a mobile chip with such a low power input. However, there are a lot of tiny stutters when I start driving a bit quicker in the game and I'm not sure why this is happening. Maybe it's because the VRAM and GPU are already at its limits. I also tried Counter-Strike and the experience here at the lowest graphical setting preset, it works very well. It averages at a triple digit frame rate but it does dip sometimes. Overall, once again, I have a great time playing Counter-Strike on this laptop especially with that super bright and vivid OLED display and I can just see the enemies a lot more vibrantly if that's how I should describe it. Some of you may say that Assassin's Creed Syndicate is an old game that shouldn't be used for testing in the year 2024 but hey, it's the last good Assassin's Creed game and I think it's still a great game to this day to test out pure raster performance of the Ryzen AI 9 HX370. At the lowest graphical settings, it does fluctuate quite a lot. Sometimes it can reach around 50 FPS but at other times it can dip all the way down to around 40 FPS. It's definitely playable, it's just that the GPU is constantly pegged at 100% usage. Finally, we downloaded the free benchmark tool for Black Myth Wukong with the recommended settings but I have to change it to the lowest graphical preset at 1080p. Surprisingly, the recommended setting did enable FSR with frame generation and set the super resolution to 54% only. I mean, the frame rate is okay and the scenery does look decent as well, so that's an option if you want to play that game on this laptop. I also tried DaVinci Resolve since many people who buy this type of laptops would tend to probably do some sort of simple video editing too. So I downloaded the Airplane Catch-Up 1 from DaVinci's website, it's a free sample by the way, and it rendered this 32 second video using the YouTube preset in just 3 seconds. Now you might ask, why should we choose the new AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX370 instead of the Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite laptops? Coincidentally, I was testing both of these laptops side by side, video at the top right corner there if you want to know more about the Snapdragon X Elite laptops. And I can say for certain that the x86 laptops, like this AMD Ryzen AI chip laptop, is indeed not as efficient as the Snapdragon X Elite laptops that are running on ARM architecture. I've tested GTA 5 on both laptops and this AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX370 laptop will consume about 20 watts more than the Snapdragon X Elite laptop. The battery life of the Ryzen AI 9 HX370 laptop is only at around 6.5 hours with my usual workloads. There is an improvement in terms of efficiency if we compare it with the older generation but it's not as drastic as switching over to an ARM architecture laptop. However, those Snapdragon laptops still don't actually support a lot of applications. For example, gaming on that Snapdragon X Elite laptop is just gonna be quite a disaster and because the translation layer is still not that good, if you don't use native ARM applications on that laptop then it's just gonna defeat the purpose. If you wanna know more, we have a video at the top right corner there as well. Okay, so let's focus back on this laptop. With so many improvements to the AMD Ryzen chip, I believe the new Ryzen AI chips will shine the most in this kind of form factor laptops. Both its CPU and integrated GPU performance are magnificent for 1080p gaming. It far surpassed my expectations and I think if you just, you know, a thin and night laptop like this, 
if you just want to bring it out, play some games, you can. But let's also address the elephant in the room, AI performance. That's one of the main reasons why this generation of chips has the word AI in the name. Unfortunately though, the lack of on-device AI applications make it difficult for us to actually test the NPU performance in a more tangible way that you and I will use on a daily basis. So we will have to leave that for another time. As of now, we do not have the price for this particular configuration of the VivoBook S16 M5606WA and the availability of configurations are subject to change according to region as well. For the Malaysian market, there is going to be an ASUS VivoBook S16 with Ryzen AI9365, 24 gigs of RAM and also 512 gigs of storage at 5,499 ringgit. This is actually a lot cheaper compared to the Snapdragon X Elite laptop that we have tested previously. And that's all that we have to share with you here today. If you have any questions, then do leave them down in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts about the new AMD Ryzen AI chips. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Isn't it incredible?